When you think of hybrid two-in-one tablets or hybrid two-in-one laptops, they're not always the most exciting stuff. Often they're just over-glorified productivity machines with the promise of portability. But Asus being Asus, they like to take these ordinary products and sometimes flip them in a way where the most wild stuff happens. And the RG Flow Z13 is a prime example. Never in my mind did I think I would appreciate having a Windows tablet that's capable of such robust gaming that it's right out there competing with some modern day gaming laptops and in some cases even exceeding them. This thing is so small but honestly so darn capable that I as a tech nerd have absolutely lost it multiple times just being blown away at how fantastic this device has been and I really want to show you guys just why I'm so in love with the Flow Z13. The configuration here is no joke. We've got AMD's Ryzen AI Max Plus 395 processor, 32 gigabytes of LP DDR5X memory. We've also got the Radeon Integrated 8060X iGPU. Furthermore, we get a nice large one terabyte SSD, Wi-Fi 7 and Bluetooth 5.4 standard standards and we do have a 13 inch quad HD plus resolution display here and again this device is loaded with so much stuff this review is going to take a hot minute so buckle in and let's get started. When you spend money like a king you deserve packaging like a king and Asus knows this because look how fancy the packaging is here seriously. Anyway once you open it up behind some standard protective packaging here it is the flows at 13 in the flesh but more on that in just a minute. We also have this colossal 200 100 watt charging adapter with a 13 inch tablet. That's absolutely crazy and shows you how much power this thing probably has. We also get a standard wall out there charging cable piece, which is good for extendability. And then finally some basic documentation to get you started. Essentially, this thing is a 13 inch tablet with two in one functionality, but make no mistake, it is considerably more hefty than a traditional tablet because you have some pretty exuberant hardware in here. However, that also means you get some amazing build quality. The whole thing is CNC aluminum, and this thing is seriously layered. You've got a clean metallic exterior all around, giving it a truly premium feel. Since it is a ROG series laptop, you're gonna have some pretty aggressive design elements to kind of give the point that this is ultimately a game machine. Now you'll notice you have a ton of air intake vents on the back over here and also some heat exhaust vents on the top side to make sure the device runs nice and cool with the dual fan setup. Furthermore, you'll also notice that the bottom portion is essentially a flap or a hinge mechanism that allows you to place the device vertically and it can tilt quite far giving you the option to have the ideal angle for your needs. Also check out this really cool diagonal glass cutout on the rear side. You can see the PCB board behind it. And the best part is you have this really cool RGB effect here. Again, amazing aesthetics. Now this thing has more ports than your average laptop nowadays, which is seriously impressive given the form factor. So on one side, you've got a USB-A port and the good old headphone jack. But on the other side, you've got two USB 4.0 ports with power delivery and display port functionality, a fully loaded HDMI 2.1 port, a proprietary charging jack port, and then a micro SD card reader. Again, the selection here is not too shabby. The keyboard sleeve here obviously doubles as a screen protector with that rubberized coating at the front side, but also the attaching feature is very practical. It just snaps right on, it's securely in place. You can even adjust it to have a slant on the keyboard if you want. Now, as far as the actual trackpad is concerned, you do have a glass surface finish here, which means you don't have any noticeable flex, nice to see. And also it's very tactile and genuinely fun to use. As far as the actual keyboard is concerned, so you definitely have the RG style theme going on here with those large square keycaps. The font is nice and large and easy to read. My only complaint is that the backlighting system here is very weak, which means it doesn't really protrude a lot of light even on maximum brightness. Now on the bright side, the typing experience here is surprising surprisingly impressive considering this is just a sleeve essentially you have a lot of key travel you get a degree of a tactile feel almost similar to a mechanical keyboard that's worth knowing this is not a mechanical keyboard and it's perfectly fine for portable gaming or typing in general as far as the display fitting is concerned so obviously you have a fully glass encased display here you will notice that you do have a bit of a noticeable chin at the bottom this definitely could have been a little bit thinner thankfully the side bezels are nice and narrow the forehead is also a little bit on the thicker side 
side, but it's not too dramatic. At the center, you do have a IR equipped full HD webcam, which is more than sufficient for your typical Zoom meeting. We also get a 13 megapixel rear camera over here, which is actually very crisp and clear. It won't replace your smartphone's camera, but it's great for taking quick images or scanning a document. Now, I know some of you prefer a OLED panel because of its super fast response rate, but this is about as good as an IPS panel gets, and it is genuinely pretty impressive. So you've got a 13 0.4 inch IPS panel with a 2.5K resolution. Additionally, you get a 16 by 10 aspect ratio and a super snappy 180 hertz refresh rate, which is great for gaming, of course. Furthermore, you get a peak brightness north of 500 nits, which is plenty, and a super responsive touch captive system. The retail version of this device will also have the stylus in box. Now, as far as color rating is concerned, you have a 100% sRGB rating, but better yet, a 100% DCI-P3 color rating as well, making it great for color sensitive activities like photo or video editing. A quick recap of the technical specifications. So we do have AMD's Ryzen AI Max Plus 395 processor, which is a mouthful, but it is truly beastly on the other hand. Now, since it is a APU, you also get AMD's Radeon 8060S integrated graphics, and it's almost criminal calling it an iGPU because of how powerful it is. More on that in just a minute. We also get a total of 32 gigabytes of LPDDR5X memory, which is technically shared between the CPU and the iGPU. Performance is where your mind is gonna be truly blown away. I mean, obviously day-to-day -day activities like surfing the web and crunching Word documents is gonna be a no-brainer for a device like this. Power productivity activities like programming code compilation on Python, for example, again, not an issue in the slightest, a very smooth workflow. Even more demanding activities like doing 3D modeling and rendering on programs like Blender, I was surprised at just how smooth things were working. There were practically no lags or latency in the actual program itself. And better yet, you basically were getting discrete level GPU performance here, and the workflow was truly, again, smooth. Now, even the most demanding of activities like multi-layer 4K video editing with 10-bit footage, again, until you stack like more than four layers, you don't really run into any noticeable frame drop, which is absolutely crazy. Technically, this is not a video editing device, but you can completely do it without any issues whatsoever. Render speeds are also quite fast. Gaming performance is top notch with this device. Seriously, I mean, games like Doom Eternal that are well optimized can actually run north of 80 frames per second at high settings with the native resolution enabled, and they pretty much consistently run at that frame rate no matter what scene you're at, which is so fluid. Of course, games like Fortnite, which are more open world in nature, again, run quite nicely north of 60 FPS pretty much consistently at high settings with the native resolution making for a very fun experience. Now, games like Enshrouded that are less optimized and truly open world do tax the hardware quite a bit, but with turbo mode enabled, plugged in, you're going to be able to hit just around 60 frames per second with medium settings. And again, it's genuinely impressive as to just how well this device is able to execute these games, which is not something you'd expect for a device that doesn't have a discrete GPU. You can also, of course, play games like Counter-Strike 2, for example, and you can hit well north of 100 FPS utilizing that 180 hertz display over here at the native resolution. Again, the fact over here is that Normally, you expect this kind of perform discrete GPUs. For context, my HP Omen Transcend 14 with a RTX 4060 actually underperforms when you compare frame rates at the same settings versus this device. And this one is much slimmer and rocking a smaller form factor and doesn't have a discrete RTX 4060, which again is just mind boggling to think just how far iGPUs have come in general and how well Asus has implemented it here. It's also worth noting that technically you can upgrade the M.2 drive with another 2230 drive, but all the other components are hard soldered, which is pretty much the norm now with most modern day laptops. Thermals on this device are decent. I mean, keep in mind you have a very limited chassis over here, so there is some degree of heat buildup, but even under unrealistic peak loads, the maximum surface temperature of the body of the actual tablet hit around 42 degrees Celsius, with a more realistic sustain load hovering around 38. 
68 degrees Celsius, which isn't too shabby. Now, as far as fan noise is concerned, when you're doing general productivity activities, the fan doesn't really go on all that loud, though when you are gaming or doing anything of high intensity, you can expect a maximum fan noise in the neighborhood of 50 decibels, putting you right around gaming laptop territory. We get a reasonably large 70 watt hour battery here, which gives us up to 12 hours of runtime with most general productivity based use cases. Though if you are gaming, that number quickly drops to the lower single digits, which is perfectly reasonable. Now, despite having a quad speaker system here, I did find the sound quality to be quite underwhelming. It doesn't get particularly loud and there's not a lot of depth with the bass or the mid range not being very impressive either. Here's a quick sound test for reference. Asus does demand a hefty price tag for the ROG Flow Z13. However, in return, they give you something that's definitely worth it in my honest opinion. I mean, it all starts off with the build quality, which is exceptional. The metallic exterior gives it a nice premium finish. You have a abundant supply of ports over here. You also get a pretty exceptional sleeve with a great trackpad and keyboard as well. The display here is top tier as well. You've got a nice sharp resolution, snappy refresh rate, and great color image quality as well. But the highlight or the star of the show, in my opinion, is the performance. The processor combined with the amount of memory here gives you performance that pretty much rivals the likes of a RTX 4060, and in some areas, even a RTX 4070 on a traditional gaming laptop, while giving the portability of a 13-inch device in a tablet-like form factor. I mean, what more could you ask? Now, granted, of course, the device is not going to be as efficient as a traditional productivity 2 in 1 laptop, but it gets pretty darn close while giving you performance that's way out of its own league. And in that regard, I definitely think the Flows at 13 is probably one of the most unique but versatile devices out there. If you want more horsepower than something like a gaming handheld, but don't want to commit to a full gaming laptop, this is the perfect device to go with in that regard. Let me know what your thoughts are on the Flow Z13. If you already own one, I'd love to hear your thoughts as well. And as always, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the content, please consider subscribing to this channel and liking this video. It genuinely helps me grow. Catch you in the next one.